All right, welcome to episode four of Puck Talk with the Brantford 99ers. I'm your host, Hayden Burnell. I'm joined alongside Joe Weber this week, um, recently acquired. He has uh, the privilege of being one of the only uh, internationals on the team, and I believe the only American. Joe, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing good, Burnell. How are you doing? Good, thanks. So I'm just going to jump right in and talk about your U18 to um, to start with. So correct me if I'm wrong, did you play um u18 as a 16 and 17 year old i did yes okay and um i see that was with the buffalo regals um growing up around me there was actually um a buffalo regals team that would come play like near near me so was that predominantly a canadian league uh yes the league we were in it was uh it was called the scta so it was like uh like the southern part of ontario so like us uh Hamilton, Niagara, Oakville, Brampton, Guelph, like a lot of those teams in that area. So you were crossing the border for every game pretty much? Every game, yeah. Okay. We are the only American team in the league. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, You do have a lot of kind of like um Canadian experience in your in your years of play. So you're from Rochester. Um, What a lot of Canadians I think don't realize I didn't I know I didn't realize this is that Rochester and Buffalo are a couple hours away from each other right um yeah hour and a half yeah oh it's only an hour and a half yeah it's not too bad so were you able to live at home during that time or did you have a Uh, no yeah I lived at home oh okay yeah that's not bad then um for some reason I thought it was a couple hours more but then um after your final season with the Regals you transitioned to the Vancouver Island Junior Hockey League. Um, you yeah. played you played a year with the Comox Valley Glacier Kings. Great name. Yeah. Uh, how did how did you kind of get that connection between the SCTA all the way out west to Vancouver? Um, at the time, my uh my advisor just had some connections out in that league, so he just happened to know the coach of of that team, and I gave it a go. So is that league part of the CJHL? Like, do they play? No. Um, no? Uh, at the time, yeah, it, it was Junior B. Oh, Junior B. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so that makes sense. And then um, you averaged almost a point per game there. You got 38 points in 42 games, and then you added a couple more playoff points. Um, after that year, did you know you wanted to transition to Junior A, or um, how did what was that transition like? Um, yeah, a hundred percent after the season, I knew I wanted to go junior A. Um, that's, um, since midget, I would say, um, that's always been my goal is to play junior A in Canada, like at, at least just for me. Mm-hmm. So that's what I was striving for in my first year playing junior B and Comox was just to develop and get better. Right on. So, uh, you started in the OJHL with Trenton. Um, you played, was it a full season with them there? Uh, yes, I did. So did you just sign there in the off season, like after after your um season with the Glacier Kings? Uh yes, yep. After the season I did sign with Trent. Um I believe it was in June sometime, June oh. or July. And then they traded you in the off season to Wellington, who then traded you here. Yeah. Um, how have you found it um adjusting to being in Ontario, well, I mean, you were in Ontario with Trenton, but being in Brantford, um, you know, new new team again, uh, new coaches. Um, have have you? Do you feel like you've adjusted well? Uh, like here in Brantford. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, very well. Um, from day one, the guys have just been great to me, great and supportive, and uh, it's been fun to come in the room every day for sure. Yeah, you guys do seem to have a special bond. I wanted, <laughs> I wanted to ask you about um your face-offs because your face-off percentage is just like insane um the other night against the junior canadians you only lost one out of 12 face-offs and then i know there was a game before that where i was keeping track of face-offs where you went undefeated so i'm like six for six or seven for seven um i noticed uh your right hand shooter on face-offs on your off side you turn your stick i didn't even know that was allowed so like did you yeah. when did you learn to do that and like 
have have you just like practiced your whole hockey career at faceoffs or like how did you develop that skill um, from a young age uh yeah um in uh i was doing like faceoff clinics at the time like in buffalo so that's where i learned how to like flip the stick so i never knew either and i i started doing that and i uh i noticed like i was winning a lot like with the lefty and um like from that age, like from a young age, I kind of prioritized on my faceoffs because it's kind of a key role as a center, also. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I have practiced my faceoffs a lot. Well, yeah, I can clearly see it definitely works out for you. Um, even in a night that we seem to be struggling in the faceoff dot, you were able to go eleven for twelve. I will now take a moment to thank a sponsor for this week's episode, the End Zone Bar and Grill. Catch the big game on one of End Zone's thirty-two plasma screen TVs plus a 10 and 15 foot big screen with special deals on food and drinks you can also catch live music at hamilton's premier sports bar on friday and saturday nights score deals on pizza ribs and hamilton's best wings tossed in your choice of 26 different sauces only 99 cents each on tuesdays the end zone is also available on doordash and uber eats and they're located at 1305 main street east in hamilton the end zone bar and grill where food and sports are king. Nine, nine. Nine, nine. The nine, nine. So you've played a lot of a lot of seasons in Canada now. Um, do you notice any big differences in Canada? Like, um, what are your favorite things? What are maybe some things you miss about the states? Uh-huh. No, I love my years here. Um, the poutine for sure. You <laughs> like, get that in the states. So, fair enough. And um, like say before your hockey career, um, well before like your junior hockey career, did you ever make trips to Canada or not really? Um, yeah, cause my uh, when I played midget, like in that Canadian league, we always went out. So right. I was kind of yeah, I was kind of used to it, just being there. Do you miss anything about? the states i know you mentioned dunkin donuts to me once <laughs> i do i do miss dunkin for sure that's my go-to oh yeah yeah every day uh, i do uh i do make point to visit dunkin donuts when i'm there um but now you guys are kind of tim hortons is infiltrating new york state i've noticed yeah yeah that's pretty know. good yeah you know it's uh it'll always be canadian to us right but yeah exactly you know, it's growing. It's in it's in a northern state. It's not like it's in every state. Um, so you're a two thousand three, which means this is your overage season. Yeah. Um, do you have any set plans for next year or are you kind of just um playing it by year as the season goes? Um, as of now, playing it by year as the season goes. Um obviously my goal and everyone's goal or most people is to go D one, but if not, um I'd still like to go D three. Um, so that'd be fine for me as well. So, um, close to home if it's D3. Both are fantastic leagues. Um, you know, either D1 or D3, it's still great hockey that you're getting. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, any, like any schools come to mind that would be like a dream school or not, not really? Um, not really. Um, just wherever I get the chance to play. For sure. That's where I would take it. Definitely. Um, I- yeah, obviously RIT would be cool for D1 because it's in my hometown. That'd be really cool. I know and, uh, the uh, player, oh, on, player on Niagara Falls just committed there, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah, he uh, he got into RIT. Not going to lie, I hadn't even heard of that school um, until, no. until he committed there. I've heard of MIT, not RIT. Okay. Hey, now I know. Um, I'm learning more about you know, D1 and D3 this year. This is my first year in the OJHL. Um, okay. Before I let you go, I I wanted to hassle you a bit and maybe ask you a few questions about Canadian trivia. Is that okay? Yeah, give it a go. All right. Who's our prime minister? Trudeau. Okay, I'll give it to you. You got the last name. Um, yep. n- name the three territories. Yukon's one. <laughs> okay. Right? Yeah. Northwest. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know the other one. <laughs> I don't know the other Two one. Two out of three, I'll give it to you. Other one's none of it. None. Yeah, I wouldn't know that. Oh, really. Not a lot of people live up there. Okay, last one. Okay. Actually, you know, sorry, there's two more. Okay. What 
what do we call our Canadian one dollar and two dollar coins? Okay, I know that one. Loonies are one, toonies are two. Okay, good. And then the last one I'm gonna ask you here is um who is the founder of Tim Hortons? <laughs> is, is it Tim Hortons? That would be Tim Hortons, the NHL player, yes, back in the sixties. <laughs> Big player. Yeah, I hope I there, huh? Was that just a wild guess? No, I what's well, the name, so I figured. Fair enough. All right. I'm well, on there, but that's good. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking time out of your night. And, uh, you know, good luck tomorrow against Caledon, and we'll talk soon. Yeah, thank you. Have right. a good night. Cheers. Nine, nine. Nine, nine. The 9-9! 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 The 9